Hey everyone, how are you doing? Liana Sangridis here from Mindful Healing LLC in Watertown, Connecticut, and I help teens stop self-destructive behaviors so that they can live a life they love. I just wanted to pop on today and continue talking with you a little bit more about gratitude in the spirit of Thanksgiving. This week in our groups at Mindful Healing, we've been talking about gratitude as a mindfulness skill. And so I wanted to share a little bit with you about how we're doing that and how gratitude relates to mindfulness. Uh, in DBT, we talk about mindfulness as having three elements, um, being able to observe, observe the state that you're in, um, and be aware of what's going on with you, um, your feelings, your thoughts, um, and describe. Uh, you wanna be able to put your thoughts and your feelings into very non-judgmental terms. And then the act of being able to really participate non-judgmentally and in the moment without being attached to the future or being attached to the past. And so when looking at gratitude, it contains all three of those elements. And so I want to think about gratitude as being able to really observe what we're grateful for and really non-judgmentally put that into words. And, you know, gratitude is a practice. Um, it's not something that we're often in the habit of, you know, taking a look at. Um, it's something, at least for me, I know that can be quickly lost, things that I become grateful for in one moment and, you know, may not have had. And when I first get into my life, I am, you know, filled with gratitude, filled with thankfulness. Um, and then I become really used to having it. And I am... You know, it's kind of just my daily life. And, you know, I'm on to wanting something bigger. I'm on to wanting something better. And I lose my gratitude for things. And so gratitude is something that we practice. It's something that, you know, is part of like mindfulness. It is a daily intentional practice um, that kind of brings us back to being non judgmental and in that present moment. And, you know, often when I'm talking about this, with the teens that I work with, um, a couple of things that they really bring up is that they get like a case of the shoulds uh, and it becomes the opposite of mindfulness. Oh, hey Mike, thanks for joining in. Um, but you know, that case of the shoulds is the opposite in that way that it's non-judgmental um, is they become very judgmental. They say like, I know I should be grateful. I know I should be grateful for my friends or my family. Or I should be grateful, you know, for having a roof over my head, but I just don't feel that way. Um, well, one of the wonderful things about a gratitude practice is that you actually don't have to feel that gratitude. You know, I was reading an article recently uh, about the neuroscience of happiness, and it was just really amazing to learn about what you know, how the brain reacts um, and what creates happiness. And one of the number one things for happiness was a gratitude practice. And our brain actually changes in response to a gratitude practice. But what I found so fascinating about this article was that neuroscience teaches us that the act of searching for gratitude has the same response in increasing our serotonin levels. And so that daily practice of searching for gratitude, of just thinking about what I might be grateful for, still increases our serotonin levels. Just like, you know, as we get in the practice of finding what we're grateful for. And research also shows us that the act of searching helps lead us to increasing being grateful. And so that case of like the shoulds and beating ourselves up has a tendency to decrease. And you know, teens, you know, can find that, you know, they are grateful for more things than they realize. So this week in group, we made gratitude trees. Um, and, you know, the kids had a lot of fun with it. Um, some kids uh, got a case of the shoulds. I know I get a case of the shoulds. As I mentioned, I can easily kind of lose my gratitude um, from, you know, a time when I had an apartment here in Connecticut that at one point didn't have light switches. And so I got my first apartment after that. I was thrilled just to have three prong plugs and light switches. And that gratitude lasted about two weeks. 
And then I was like, oh my God, I don't have enough storage space. I can't believe I have an apartment that does not have, you know, cabinet space in the kitchen or enough space for all my clothes. I'm not sure there is an apartment with enough space for all my clothes, but you know, maybe. Um, but gratitude can fade really quickly. And so I want to encourage everybody, you know, my challenge for everyone this week is to look at how you can establish a practice. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be daily. Um, that can focus a little too much on perfectionism, but something that's part of your routine. And it only takes, you know, a couple of minutes or less to kind of say, what is something today that I'm grateful for? Or to even just try and search for something. And see if you notice after a couple of weeks if it's helping to increase your happiness or change your perspective at all. Um, so if you have any questions or if you want to learn more about the brain and happiness, it's not my area. I'd be happy to send you the article. I get a little lost in some of the science sort of words, um, but I have it somewhere. So you can definitely ask uh, in the comments and I will find it and send it to you. But thanks for tuning in, um, and I'll put my information in the comments below if you have any further questions. So have a wonderful week, and happy Thanksgiving, and keep practicing your gratitude. Take care.